Here's an overview of the short story Home by Ian Crichton Smith. The where, the when, the what and the who. Where? The story is set in a rundown area of Glasgow, Scotland's largest city. A clear sense of place is evoked by references to tenements, which are uniform buildings comprising several flats, graffiti, gang culture and blades, plus the description of what the younger Jackson saw when he climbed a statue to show off to his now wife. We're told he could see the Clyde, the ships and the cranes. Returning to this place where he once lived for five years, Jackson reminds his wife, it's 35 years since we left. It is clear from his recollections of those days of poverty and of life there. For example, he heard the mice scuttering behind the walls, not to mention the fact that the audience was sprayed with disinfectant in the cinema, that life was tough in this place. And it is still a tough place all these years later. The couple walk into the close whose walls were brown above and dirty blue below, pitted with scars, suggesting a building that is ugly, damaged and uncared for. This impression of life in the tenements is reinforced by the broad Glaswegian dialect spoken by the stringy woman wearing a cheap bracelet round her throat, whose voice is compared to a saw that would cut through steel forever. However, Jackson becomes aware that there have been significant changes in the area, as suggested by the town had changed a lot since they had left it. For example, the Lover's Lane had disappeared, and this could be seen as symbolic, given the often terse, tense relationship between Jackson and his wife. We also learn that instead of small shops, supermarkets were springing up, flexing their huge muscles. This use of imagery, personifying the supermarkets, makes them sound intimidating, and it is clear that while the architecture and buildings may have changed, life is still hard for the residents. Jackson's return to this place may be slightly motivated by nostalgia, but it is mainly prompted by the fact that he desperately wants to tell someone how well he had done. He is thus frustrated by the fact that all the people he had known were gone elsewhere. At times, the reader may wonder whether Jackson's nostalgia about tenement life is causing him to feel that things in the area have changed more than they really have done. His wife is unimpressed with being dragged along to visit the tenement and her words and behaviour underline her negative feelings about their former home area. For example, she immediately suggests that Jackson should lock the car, dear, whereas her husband, rather naively, doesn't believe that there is any need and replies, but they don't steal things here. She, in turn, reacts to his comment by smiling disdainfully. After they are ordered away from the tenement area by the punks, the couple drive through the city, with Jackson observing the many changes en route. There are so many that he could hardly recognise the place. As the story reaches its conclusion, the action has moved to the far more comfortable setting of an upmarket city hotel frequented by people like them. The setting of the first class hotel is used to highlight the full extent of the couple's materialism, superficiality and sense of superiority as they revel in its plush surroundings, at last feeling at home. Jackson observes the hotel guests who have red faces and red necks and we are told that he recognised who they were. Like his wife, he feels that in this hotel and in similar social settings in Africa, about which he reminisces fondly with a stab of pain, he has found his true home. Thus, setting is used very effectively in this story to highlight that home is not necessarily always a fixed place, but can also be a state of mind. The Jacksons clearly feel at home when they are with people of a similar class. When? The action takes place in the 1970s. There are references to shipbuilding, which was in decline by then, to one of the punks having a long curving moustache, to the flicks, or the picture house, and to the overt racism that prevailed in South Africa and elsewhere during this period of history. Jackson thinks blacks weren't like us, his words emphasising his racist, colonialist attitudes. What? Home explores several important themes. Unsurprisingly, given the title, the first is the notion of belonging and what constitutes home. The second is social class, the third change, and the fourth prejudice, taking the form of racism and sectarianism. Who? There are two main characters in the story, Mr and Mrs Jackson, 
an unpleasant couple who are visiting the poor area of Glasgow where they lived for a while prior to emigrating to South Africa 35 years before. Since the Jacksons' departure from Glasgow, their personal circumstances have evidently changed significantly and they are extremely class conscious, exuding a smug air of snobbish superiority. The use of third-person narrative voice in Home allows the reader insight into the minds of both characters at different points in the story. This makes the characterisation of both Mr Jackson and his wife highly effective, and it encourages the reader to develop a strong dislike for both of them, Mr Jackson. It is clear from the very beginning of this story that wealth and status are important to Mr Jackson, as he arrives at his former tenement home in a black polished car and wearing a square red ring. Both of these materialistic possessions are clearly status symbols. Crichton Smith uses imagery early in the story to portray Jackson as an unpleasant character. Gazing round him and up at the sky with a hungry look as if he were scanning the Welt. The use of the Afrikaans word Welt, which means a grassy plain, here, establishes his connection with South Africa from the start. The word choice of hungry also suggests he's predatory, like a hyena. As the story progresses, we are told that Jackson's wallet bulged from his breast pocket and that he wanted to tell someone how well he had done, immediately letting the reader see that he wants to be admired by people from the place he came from and applauded for his rags to riches success story. Only he doesn't know anyone there anymore, so he has no appreciative audience. 35 years previously, things had been very different for him. For example, he was bullied by the ruthless factor into paying full rent for a damp, substandard flat, with rain coming through the roof. The readers discover this during one of Jackson's flashbacks. Although most of the story is told chronologically, there are a couple of flashbacks viewed from Jackson's perspective. Another of Jackson's negative characteristics is the way he speaks to his wife at one point, when he implies that he basically dragged her out of the gutter. He tells her to shut up when she challenges him, adding, you didn't even have proper table manners when I met you. Burn. This shows that despite his humble background, Jackson still feels superior to his wife, which suggests that their relationship could be more for show, possibly another status symbol, rather than based on genuine love. Yet equally, when Jackson is walking through the close, he takes his wife by the hand, and when he sees her surrounded by a pack of children, he rushes to her assistance, showing that he does look out for her as well. Once he is at the hotel, Jackson thinks how much better he is even than the other guests of the same social class. Although they are of a similar status to him, he congratulates himself that, unlike them, he has been bold enough to travel. Those men who ran Scotland, the backbone of the nation, people like himself, by God less than him, he had the guts to travel. Mrs Jackson. The initial description of Jackson's wife does not flatter her, preparing the audience not to warm to her. Her face is described as desiccated, which means dried out, and depicts her as shriveled and embittered. We are also told that her face seemed to be held together like a lacy bag by the wrinkles, a simile which once again portrays her as unattractive. It is clear from the start of the story that Mrs Jackson is very negative about her husband's visit to the tenement block where they used to live. Indeed, at one point, her frustration with her husband explodes into a rant as she points out that they, the locals, don't give a damn about you. She clearly feels that they should never have come back because people he wanted to impress are all dead and rotting and she wishes that they were both back in Africa where we belong. There is a stark contrast between Mrs Jackson's attitude when visiting the tenement where they used to live and her attitude after they leave the tenement. Initially, she says, there was no need to come here at all regarding the visit to the tenement and we are also told she kept her fur coat as far away from them as she could. However, as they travel through the vastly changed streets of Glasgow, Jackson suddenly says, I wish to God we were home, implying Africa. And at that point, his wife smiled for the first time. This change in attitude is amplified by the description of her at the hotel in the closing paragraphs of the story. Now she was smiling and trailing her fur coat. The fur coat is symbolic of the trappings of wealth that both the Jacksons are so obsessed with. The fact that she wears one is evidence of their prosperity or wealth. 
While Jackson is not always pleasant to his wife, it has to be said that she isn't slow to put him in his place either, reminding him that it was me who drove you to the top. This implies that if she hadn't pushed him, he would not have achieved success because he was lazy. She knows how to bring him down to size, as he's then described as being like a bull wounded in the arena. Other minor characters in the story are also effective in highlighting themes that are explored in the story. For example, the Jamesons. Mr Jameson was a heavy drinker who was regularly violent towards Catholics and his wife, highlighting the themes of domestic abuse, alcoholism and sectarianism. He would go off to the pub and pick a fight with a Catholic. He would come home covered in blood. His face bruised a fine Protestant blue. Meanwhile, we learn that Mrs Jameson would come downstairs the next morning, her eyes black and blue. But she'd make excuses, for example, that she'd stumbled. Interestingly, there is silence in the tenement when Mr Jameson beats his wife, which makes the community complicit in such domestic abuse. Another minor character is the Factor. He is portrayed as so miserly that it is as if even giving words away were an agony of the spirit for him. Sounds like he'd make even Scrooge look generous. Moreover, the Factor has one gold tooth in the middle of the bottom row of teeth, helping to emphasise that he is a sinister man who is not to be messed with. Unable to stand up to the Factor, Jackson has to put up with the rain coming through the roof of his flat. The memory angers him. He now thinks of the Factor as a wee nyaf, a great Scots dialectal word for a stupid, insignificant person. The irony is that despite the Factor treating Jackson so badly, Jackson still cannot see the similarity between his own poor treatment at the hands of the mean Factor and the vastly worse treatment of black people by white people under apartheid, the racist regime in South Africa, his new home. Finally, Mickey and Charlie. These are two local lads, the punks, who threaten the Jacksons. Their menacing behaviour emphasises the change in the nature of the neighbourhood over the past 35 years. When they are advancing on the Jacksons, dramatic imagery is used to describe their threatening choreographed movements. They moved forward in concert, a ballet. The choice of the ballet imagery here is interesting, as ballet is often associated with the upper classes, perhaps emphasising how far removed the Jacksons now are from their roots. However, although Jackson is initially worried that the punks are going to be damaging his car, or bus as they refer to it, all that happens is that one of them kicks a tyre absently. It is Jackson himself whom they threaten. Get out of here, Daddy, before we cut you up. So Mickey may not have a big role, but he definitely gets one of the best lines. Thank you for watching this video and hope you found it useful. See you next time. In other videos on home, we look at key themes and key quotes from the story. If you found this or any of our other videos useful, it would be great if you could subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thanks for your support.